Should you use face and every good boy deserves something when you're teaching reading? Let me tell you after this. My approach for reading has changed over the years. Uh, I was certainly taught with the face and every good boy deserves method. Uh, Most of us probably were at some stage in the past. However, I've changed my thinking. I don't think this is the best way to teach reading anymore. And the reason is because for students to remember what this note this note here is, for example, they have to remember the rhyme or the acronym FAC. They've got to then say, oh, that's a C, and they've then got to play it on the piano. Or if it's every good boy deserves, maybe they want this note up here, F. They've got to think every good boy deserves fruit. That's what we say here in Australia. I don't even know why. They've got to think fruit. That's an F. Where's the F on the piano? I would much prefer that my students don't have to think about relating it to anything and they can just see the patterns that emerge on the stave. The best way to do that is to give them what I call guide notes. And the guide notes that I tend to start with are the G and the F. And that's because these clefs are actually G and F clefs. Yes, this is a treble clef, but ultimately this is a G clef. All it says officially is that the note on this line where this circle starts and where the bullseye I say is, is a G. That's what it says. The same with this one. The note on the line where this starts and around the two dots here, this is an F clef. It says that that note's an F. And I think students should know that. They need to know why and how, what these clefs mean, right? So we drill the G and the F and the middle C. They're all on lines. So yes, some people would say that could be a little bit confusing. The other alternative, if you uh, would like, is to go next for this C. Uh, Or you could do that first, the G, the C, and the C down here. Um, Of two opinions. I I don't mind either one. What I do think is next most important is what I call the five Cs. So students should know middle C. They should know the C down here. They should know the C two lines below because it comes up pretty quickly in music. And they should know the C two lines above the stave, and our C here. One, two, three, four, five. I want my students to instantly be able to recognize them, play them on the piano. I'm not, they're not thinking all cows or anything like that. They're just going, oh, yeah, that's a C. And of course, this is a mirror image outwards, if you haven't become aware of that yet. So the five Cs are my next guide notes. The G, F, and the, the G, F, and the C on the clefs, the five Cs. And then lastly, we make a reference to the fact that it's good to know the bottom line, and that happens to also be a G. So I do a little crossover pattern like this. And guess what the top line is, guys? Yeah, it's an F. With those notes learnt, drilled, and there are some really good apps out there that can drill these kinds of things with students, or flashcards if if you wanted to. With those notes in memory, then being able to find the relevant notes by intervals becomes much easier. So this note here, well, it's the middle note of a triad between these three, or it's a third up from the C that I already know, or it's a third down from the G I know. What about if I need to find this note here? Well, I already know that's a C, so that's one above, That's um, that's a D. Uh, What about this note here? Well, that's next to the C, so that's easy to remember. Um, you get the you get the idea, right? And particularly for notes off the bottom of the stave too. You know, this can be a painful note for students to work out, right? Because they've got to count backwards in the alphabet from G. That's a pain. Much easier to know the C there, and oh, it's just the next line up. It means it's a skip up or a third up. That must be an E. So that's my approach to teaching music reading using guide notes: G, F, and C, telling them what the clefs mean. The five C's and the F and the G, the top and the bottom lines of the stave. Try it out. Let me know what you think. See how it goes. And I'll be really interested, as I always am, to discuss these kinds of things with teachers on the blog.
Hi guys, thanks so much for watching this video and I hope you've enjoyed the content. If you'd like to find out more about my creative approach to teaching piano, then make sure you subscribe to these videos. Just use the button down in the corner of this video and then head over to timtopham.com, that's T-O-P-H-A-M, where you can find my blog, my weekly podcast and information about my private community of piano teachers called The Inner Circle. I look forward to seeing you there.